from the stench to bloom. Today I, I, I've been working with flowers and with things which are really stinky. I, today I had a moment where I was trying to clean out a, a sink and I was putting my hands, my well just, just one of my hands, I was putting one of my hands into water which had stuff in it and I was just like, you know, trying to clean it out so that it would like there'd be a flow so the water would you know go where it's supposed to go etc and at one point like when I was like my hand was like you know deep in it I I there was just like this whiff of like scent of like disgustingness that like came I was like I like I actually I actually cringed like I, I think I have like a pretty high tolerance for like stinkiness but it didn't look that dirty but like it smelled really bad and and not only did it like it smell bad, not only did it, like that whiff, which made me like turn my my face away from it. I uh, I was walking inside the house, having washed my hands already several times, and one of the brothers comments and says, "There's something. I think there's something that's wrong in the kitchen." I hadn't. I wasn't actually in the kitchen at the time, but I had passed through the kitchen, and the stink was like so much that he told me that I think we have to check it out and figure out what's wrong and solve the problem. I uh, I ended up washing my hands my um, I don't know seven times later you know a bunch of times, and um, my left hand still stinks. Like I, I actually like when I'm praying I even now like during the mass I'm actually keeping my my uh, my hands together but at a certain distance from my face because it distracts me. Today in the today in the reading. It says how, from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters, through Jesus, let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise. That is, lips that confess his name. Lips that confess his name. And notice how it says fruits of lips that confess his name. The first thing, whenever you're dealing with, whenever you're planting uh flowers and you want them to bloom, you have to make sure that you use uh, manure. You need something stinky. Like at the basis of any good of roses or you have to figure out what exactly you're going to use for them to bloom. It's necessary. I know in Las Persias, like the better flowers, they all have something stinky at the base. And the phrase here, it also says, I was looking at it and it says, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Uh, the word I want to harp on is the word confess. I was looking it up in in the Greek, and it, it the word is homo, lo, homologia. Homos means like. Uh, homoousios is one of those like classic words that everyone studies when they're studying theology. Homoousios means that the Father is one with the Son. The Son is one with the Father. No, homoousios. There, he's one, one being with the Father. And this word too, it means homologia, it means to say the same thing as, to be in accord, to have the same look, to harmonize with the logos, to harmonize with the word. And St. Augustine says that when uh, at the beginning of, I don't know if it's at the beginning, at one moment in the Confessions, he says, when I confess, when I acknowledge my sin, I am doing something which is pleasing to God because I'm hating what he hates. By hating what he hates, by when I confess my sin, I, dis, I, I gag. Like I'm supposed to gag. When I recognize, when I hate what's evil, by doing that, by gagging with God, I'm conforming my heart to him. I'm uniting myself. I'm becoming one with the, the logos. But notice how it doesn't actually end there. Like it starts with stench, but it doesn't end with stench. It ends with bloom. So the first thing is we recognize, we, we, we gag, and from the stench, when it bears fruit, little by little, at first it's just, it's just tears. It's just disgusting. It's just something which gives nausea. But little by little in the spiritual life, as one goes closer, that confession blooms.
In the book of Sirach, there's a phrase in chapter 39 which says, Listen to me, O you holy sons, and bud like a rose growing by streams of water. In other words, let the confession, let it flow. What I was trying to solve today, why my hand got really stinky, is because I was trying to solve something that wasn't flowing, that wasn't going in the right direction, that was, that was stagnant. Bud like a rose growing by stream of water. Send forth fragrance like frankincense. Frankincense is all the, all the sacrifice in the temple. Even the bread had frankincense. Okay, it's supposed to, it's a symbol of the good smell of Christ. Maybe I need to put some like frankincense on my left hand. And put forth blossoms like a lily. Lily is the, is of the flowers that we actually have lilies in front of us. And of all the flowers, lily is a blossom which goes the, the greatest distance. It like spreads itself more than others. Scatter fragrance and sing a hymn of praise. You can see the link with this and the phrase. The author to the Hebrews might have even been thinking of this passage when he said these words. Brothers and sisters, through Jesus, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Notice how it says that confess his name, but in the, in the Greek it could even be that confess to his name that go to confession to a priest. The fruit of like having gone to confession is precisely that, that it ends in praise, that you praise God. And it's beautiful when you look at the saints because the more someone, all saints, they accept Our Lady. But everyone else, we've already started in misery. Like we've had something which, we're, which makes us gag and has brought us to the point of praising God. Like St. Teresa has that phrase from quoting the Psalms that says, uh, I will sing your praise forever. And in eternity, I will sing your praise. I will sing your mercy. Obviously, the one who most sung the praise of God is Our Lady. But she was very conscious of the fact that everything, like if she had a good scent, it was all coming from Christ. Like she praised, she praised the Father in the Son. Like she recognized that that was her spot that everything she had was all thanks to him. St. Teresa has a phrase that I'm sure Our Lady would have applied to herself, where she, she says how uh, this is what they call a, a brain freeze. You just, you had like the phrase in the tip of your tongue and it just didn't come out. Anyway, there's a, Today we're actually celebrating the, the votive mass of Our Lady Guadalupe. Today is not the 12th of December. But I think of Guadalupe as also how the Lord has used a uh, manure to become a song of praise. Like she actually appeared on a place which was Tequat La Supe, which was, uh, her original title was Tequat La Supe, which is she who steps on the head of the serpent, who crushes the head of the serpent. And she appeared precisely in a place where they had done sacrifices of pregnant women, which was part of like the process of, of, of that barbarity. So it was one of the many sacrifices which were being human sacrifices which were done in Mexico. And it's beautiful how the Lord permitted not only uh, that there be conversions there, but to be conversions be associated with flowers. In other words, precisely in a place where such hideousness had taken place, the Lord wanted there to be roses that were blooming and that were part of the, of the miracle of the tilma of Guadalupe and the 10 million conversions which happened afterwards. Imagine how much praise came out of it. So the Lord uses things uh, of, of evil and the evil of our life, he uses it to bring forth more praise. I, I have in, we have in front of us uh, Ian, a man who's also experienced a conversion not linked with Guadalupe so much as with Garabandal. And today we're looking forward to, he's also gonna uh, share with us, with the brothers, his, his story of, of 40 years of, of misery. And I'm sure that we're gonna end the, the experience, the, the details with him praising God. Because in the end of the day, when one really looks at the misery of what one's come out of, 
It always ends in praise and a praise which, which blooms.